Hey, this is Russ. Time for another patient. Yes, this is patient 9M from Pennsylvania. Now, I originally had assigned number nine to another person, but since she had not come through, uh, we reassigned that number to uh, this particular patient. <laughs> so he's given us quite a bit of background, so I'm just going to read this like I typically had, and I'll throw in some comments as I normally do. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm going to be reading um, uh, his uh, information, and I'm going to do that off camera, so um, I won't be looking directly at you. Okay, so uh, patient 9M from Pennsylvania, he had robotic knee surgery. Yeah, this, you know, that's kind of a new technology, right? I don't know too much about it, but they say it's more precise. But anyways, he says, um, when I was 22, I was in a bad car accident and shattered my right femur. It took about a year before I could walk without crutches, and I had four surgeries. He had a lot of stuff. Uh, I had metal plates broke uh, twice in my leg. Then I had an infection, had to have a bone graft, had the metal plates removed two years later, went through a lot of PT, and was able to walk without a limp. I was an athlete and went to college on a football scholarship. I also did judo and placed third and second in the NCAA judo championships. Huh another martial artist. <laughs> that was 38 years ago. Okay. So um, my femur surgeon said at best, I'd be able to run maybe three miles. I am not allowed to water ski, skateboard, ice ski, uh, regular ski, <laughs> or rollerblade. My femur surgeon also told me that when I turned around 50, I'd probably need to get a knee replacement. Yeah. Uh, due to not being able to get my femur bone completely straight and the pressure this would eventually put on my knees. And when you're 24, and some say 50, and someone says 50, that sounds like 100 or 150. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're young, you don't think, uh, you don't think 50's around the corner. It sounds like it's way off in the distance, but really, you know, time flies. Um, I took up running about 15 years ago. I was able to do three half marathons. I really enjoyed running. Then I turned 51 and my knees started killing me. I remember my femur surgeon telling me I'd need a knee replacement around age 50, so I saw a knee surgeon. We went uh, and did the gel shots, and it helped me a lot. You know, gel things are kind of temporary, right? <laughs> so uh, I did it once. I did, I did uh, uh, one of those injections once, but then I never did it again. So anyways, he says uh, he mentioned that uh, on the MRIs of my knee, he noticed that I had a cyst on the top of my tibia just below my knee and that we should keep an eye on that. The knee surgeon told me that I'd get another five or seven years before I'd need to get my knee replaced. I started alternating my workouts to try to preserve my knee and did running, elliptical, and biking. That was nine years ago. Then in March of 2020, COVID hit and my gym had to close. So all I could do was run. I was running six miles a day. Then in June, my knees started really killing me again. I normally run in the morning, but my knees was killing me all day long. So I switched to running at night. But all this did was make it impossible to sleep at night. So it got so bad, I made an appointment with the best knee surgeons in the area. I was walking with crutches and it was so bad. My knee surgeon and I saw that I needed a knee replacement. Yeah, sometimes you get to that point, you, you know it's time, right? I asked if we should try the shots again. We did cortisone and gel shots. The cortisone got me off the crutches, but I could not run nor do ellipticals. All I could do was bike. I was biking about an hour and 20 minutes to 40 minutes a day, and uh, the gel shots did nothing. I made an appointment with my knee surgeon early September, and we agreed that I needed my knee replaced. However, he would not do the knee replacement until three months after my last gel shot, which put me into December 1st for the knee replacement. He mentioned that he saw the cyst in my tibia on the x-rays, but he could not tell how big it might be. But we needed to deal with that in the surgery. So as a side note, my knee surgeon uh, was amazed at my flexibility I had with the knee despite the extensive femur fracture I had. I was at 130 degrees of flexion. He told me he had never encountered a patient with this extensive of a femur fracture who had so much movement and little restriction on what I could do. I told he told me to keep as active as I could up to the surgery. You know what? I think this whole activity before surgery is more critical than we might believe, okay? Because I had very little uh, activity, and I think that's why I'm slowed down and everything, okay? So he kept, he kept active, all right? 
So, anyways, he says um, he keep it keep as uh, busy and as active as possible to surgery. In fact, the day before my surgery, I cut my lawn with my own push mower, which is a three quarter of an acre, and also did an hour and forty minute bike ride. Well, this guy does a lot of stuff, man. I haven't done anything, so <laughs> I could not stand still for more than ten minutes, and walking more than two to three miles was difficult. I made it clear to my knee surgeon that I wanted to resume running after my knee replacement. He said that it is possible with some of the new knee replacements that are available. So I had surgery. The cyst proved to be a much bigger problem than originally anticipated. Once he got to my knees, in my knees, and got to see the cyst, it was the size of a baseball. Ooh. He chiseled it out and put it in a bone graft. He tested it and then it was found non-cancerous. Good for you. Um, they don't. They don't know what caused the cyst. I did PT for six weeks and then had a follow-up appointment with my knee surgeon. I used crutches for the balance of about four weeks and no cane. I was able to bend at 114 degrees at six weeks. I was at 30 degrees two days after surgery. Oh, okay. So he started out at only two degree, <laughs> at only 30 degrees, and he he was able to move to 114 in six weeks. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, when I walked into my appointment, he was floored. He said he did not think I'd ever be able to walk without the assistance of crutches or a cane, and he did not think that I'd ever be able to get to 100 degrees knee bend. I asked about starting a running program as we had discussed pre-surgery, and he said, no running ever again. Okay, no pickup basketball, no hard trauma on my knee, biking and ellipticals were fine. I was devastated. He said that he had to remove so much bone from the cyst that he had to use uh, a much bigger probe into my tibia to hold the artificial knee in place, and that bone graft material, when it heals, will never be as strong as normal bone. If I ran, I'd pound out the graft, and then there would be big problems to try to fix it. So I had to adjust. So he's, he's lost a lot of his ability to do the things he used to do. Okay. Last week, I was at 120 degrees of flexion. I'm doing 12 minutes on the elliptical and doing an hour walk a day. I still have pain from the bone graft. I can't cross my legs. You know, the crossing of the legs is tough for almost everybody. But I do know this. Uh, they don't really want you to do that. Um, but uh, believe it or not, I can kind of do that now. All right. But knowing that you probably shouldn't, I don't. Okay. All right. So he, he can't cross his legs. But walking and doing ellipticals are pain-free. I can stand without pain. I have one more PT session next week, and then I'm on my own. I'm still not able to sleep more than four hours a night with, st uh, with still pretty severe pain at night. This is pretty common. I think most of us can't sleep well. That's, I, think, I think that's probably the more uh, hurtful thing. <laughs> so you're trying to get some sleep. You can't get any sleep after surgery. Uh, this was wearing on me. They said that this should get better after three to six months mark. Yes, it does. Because I think it took me close to four months before I was able to go to my bed. I slept most of my time on the recliner, so which a lot of people do. And I know that the doctors don't like the recliners, so not sure why, <laughs> but they don't. All right. I'm looking at getting an elliptical bike. I want the hard workout the elliptical gives me, but I like to do it outside. This may be an alternative to not being able to run. Biking is okay, but it takes a long time to get the same workout that I can get with running. That's true. Former runners are not uh, are no longer as start again. Former runners are no longer able to run. Uh, have given good reviews of elliptical bikes as a viable alternative. Swimming is also an option, but frankly, I don't like swimming. Anyways, uh, just wanted to share with you my long story. The bottom line from my perspective is to wait as long as possible before you get your knee replacement. I was at the end and had no regrets. And try to stay as active as you can up to the knee surgery because post-surgery will be a significant drop-off that you will need to climb out of. And the climb is easier the more active you were pre-surgery. I 100% agree with that. And I've heard that before too, that the more active you are, the better your chances of recovery was gonna, is going to be. Okay, I was not that active, as you know. Uh, I was mostly just sitting, going to going to my classes to teach, stand up and teach, go back, sit down, <laughs> get back in the car, and get back home. So really, I had very little activity. Um, so okay, the biggest thing that I get out of this is that he was an active person and continued to keep doing it. Okay until he couldn't do it anymore. I, I tend to say that if you can do that, that's probably a, a good thing. Um, 
you know, sometimes we 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 uh, we get these surgeries a little earlier than we probably should. Uh, in the, in my case, it was probably the case. Um, but he's telling us uh, wait it out as long as you can, stay as active as you can, and then do as much activity as you can afterwards as well. So, anyways, um, I think that's probably enough for today for patient nine M. And uh, I'm sure he'll keep us informed on how his progress is going to be, you know, throughout this time. So hopefully you enjoyed what he had to say. Um, I had a couple photos up, I'm sure, for you to have taken a look at. <laughs> so you can see before his uh, surgery, uh, before, right after his um, surgery, and then a little time after that. So overall, uh, it sounds like he is getting back to where he'd like to be, but he is kind of restricted on certain types of activities. So... Anyways, if you guys like this and you want to be part of this um, knee patient uh, updates, uh, feel free to send me your information and I will do my best to put you um, as one of our patients. And again, I don't reveal names or where you're from other than the fact of which state you are in. So um, if you want to do that, there's a link in the description below of a video you can watch on how to make the submission. But everything is emailed to me, okay, at contactrussisright at gmail.com, okay? And then uh, send me some photos of your knee. We don't need to see anything else other than your knee, okay? And, and because it makes it for a better better video. We have some visuals to take a look at. And then all I need is um, uh, male or female, your age, what state you're in, and uh, when you had your surgery, and what you're doing right now with your, uh, your surgery, <laughs> pre post-surgery stuff, okay? Anyways, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time.